June 16th from Blue Water Outlook. Well, as I've been saying, we're getting into that time of year when precipitation is much more mesoscale based. And what I mean by that is rather than widespread synoptic type patterns or large scale patterns, they're much more these smaller scale patterns. And they're very hard to predict in advance, very hard to predict the amount of rainfall. Give you two examples from last week. We have on the left side here is a band of thunderstorms that moved through the Atlanta area. Look how small scale these are. And then over the right picture here, this was larger, actually much larger, as a derecho or a cluster of thunderstorms. And again, this is more of a mesoscale type feature. These develop over the Great Lakes in this case, moved across parts of the Ohio Valley. Uh, and then actually into the mid-Atlantic and along the coastline actually over a 24-hour period. So they can produce a lot of rain in the case of the derecho or more localized rain in the case of this line, but that's what we're going to be looking at more and more as we get into the summer. Now we continue to have soil moisture anomalies across the nation. Uh, we typically do have these um, in one way or the other, but these have been pretty persistent. We have the area from Iowa across parts of Missouri, Illinois, and then the southeast U.S. that has been very wet, and that's that area of dark green. That area could really use some drying out, three or four days without any significant rain. On the other hand, we have across the west and south continued very dry conditions, and that's in desperate need of rain. And I'll give you a hint, I don't see any into the foreseeable future for that area. So taking a look at the drought monitor, I wanted to primarily look on the bottom images here on changes over the last week and four weeks. And let's take a look at the last four weeks. What we saw, the trends that we started getting very wet, you can see that area of green, and that means increasing um, classifications or improvement in the drought. And areas in yellow are decreasing or more drought. So what that's saying is looking at a four-week trend, the upper Midwest experienced drought relief or improvement. But if we get into the one week, and this isn't up to date as of today, it's actually through June 11th, you do see that that area of high pressure has really kept things dry in the West, and almost the entire country uh, gradually got a little bit drier, and even the areas of the Midwest uh, got a little, either stayed neutral or dried out a bit. So here's the last rain uh, rainfall over the last seven days. You can see, as I mentioned last week with that axis of uh, precipitation, I sort of mentioned that it might be right in this area here, and that's with that upper jet energy, and indeed it was. Some scattered precipitation in Iowa and Missouri, but what's key for Iowa and Missouri is that there was about three or four days when it was predominantly rain-free in those areas, and we still had rain, but overall it's getting a little bit drier, or at least holding its own. The green is an um, inch or so, and there are a couple pockets of that yellow, and that's two or three inches. But most of the rain occurred over the eastern part of the U.S., right along the east coast, down into parts of the Tennessee uh, Valley, as well as the southeast U.S. Um, Texas is a very welcome rain in the west and the south. It was much more scattered. Now, these are the areas that either receive surplus rain, and that's green and blue, are deficits and that's yellow so you can see areas that received uh, quite a bit of rain and that was that ratio that came down here you can see it really uh, averaged out for the week uh, brought above normal precipitation uh, in the middle part of the nation is very scattered some areas above normal but this is what I was saying even in Iowa uh, here's a little bit below normal here's a little bit above but most of its gray and that's neutral then we saw some drying in parts of eastern Oklahoma and Kansas, and this area has been wet, so that was probably welcome to get a little drying in there. And unfortunately, where we really need some additional rain over west Texas, it looks like it continued to dry out. So here's the steering flow that we see currently. We have that area of high pressure over the southern part of the U.S., and it really hasn't bowed north as much as I anticipated. It's uh, bowing to the north, it's lifted to the north, but it's not all that strong. That's why we had a bit of rain in Texas over the last week. But you can see the jet stream does push along the northern tier of the U.S., dips a bit down into the eastern uh, part of the U.S., and that's where precipitation will be focused uh, over the upcoming week. 
This is the uh, example of that jet stream. And I think what we'll see this week is this ridge of high pressure will be bowing up to the north here. Uh, I mentioned last week that this is a persistent pattern. And that's going to keep the west and southwest primarily dry. And then we're going to have these areas of energy moving along the jet stream. And as it dips down to the southeast U.S., it could enhance precipitation in that area. Matter of fact, as I've been mentioning, it looks like this is a persistent pattern. And right through the next 6 to 10 day period, it looks like that will be the predominant pattern with that area of high pressure bulging to the north and then the jet stream dipping in the west and also in the east. So here's the rainfall forecast for the next seven days. The enhanced precipitation over the uh, parts of the Ohio Valley, Tennessee River Valley into the southeast U.S. is with a quasi-stationary boundary in that region and with the upper jet stream dipping to the south with some pockets of energy here and there. The Rain in the Midwest, I think that's more scattered uh, in Iowa and Minnesota this week as in the last couple weeks. There will be some precipitation, but it'll be more scattered. Then if we look anywhere from South Texas into the Western U.S., very dry signal once again. Uh, could be some scattered showers down in Texas and maybe a few thunderstorms, but very scattered. For the most part, though, this could be absolutely dry over the Western U.S. Now I want to focus, this is week one on the top and week two on the bottom. I want to focus on week two. Look at this, it looks almost identical. Mainly dry in this region right here. Uh, be some scattered light rain in uh, this area here. This area could use some west and central parts of Nebraska and Kansas. Scattered precipitation, probably close to normal in this region, and that'll be good because they need to dry out. And then also scattered over this east and southeast. So it looks very similar for the next two weeks the latter part of June into early July. So the takeaway points from this week's briefing, the upper jet flow will remain over the northern tier of the U.S. region of high pressure over the south will continue very dry over the western U.S. and the south. The axis of most likely precipitation will extend from the Tennessee Valley into the southeast U.S. But overall, I think there will be somewhat, somewhat less activity this week than last week, especially over the northern tier of the U.S. And right now, it looks like this pattern is not going to change all that much. There will be some of these mesoscale factors and features that will develop that I can't really see or pinpoint at this time that could produce heavy rain. Otherwise, I don't see a whole lot of change. Thank you for listening to this week's briefing. I'll be talking with you again next week.